Hello, welcome to Hello, welcome to the manufacturing course. In this video, I will discuss about the manufacturing model and metric. Successful manufacturing companies use a variety of metrics to help manage their operations. Manufacturing metrics can be divided into two basic categories: production performance measure and manufacturing costs. Metrics that indicate production performance include production rate, plant capacity, proportion of time on the equipment, and manufacturing lead time. Manufacturing costs that are important to a company include labor and material costs, and also the cost of producing for each product, and the cost of operating a given piece of equipment. In this video, I will discuss this metric and show how they are calculated. For calculation, we need to use, for calculation, we need to use mathematical model for production performance and manufacturing costs. Many aspects of manufacturing are quantitative. Some of these except are discussed in the previous session in the four product parameter, production quantity, product variety, number of parts per product, and number of operation to produce a part. So mathematical model of the production performance can be used as following RP, PC, U, A, MLT, and WIP. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the okay. Let's go to the first one. Production rate R. Production rate for individual processing or assembly operation is usually expressed as an hourly rate. That means the completed work unit per hour. We will consider how the production rate is determined for the three types of production, batch production, just of production, and mass production. Before I discuss on these three types of production, I was certain in, in the sector time, also known as the operation sucker time, TC. For any production operation, the sucker time TC is defined as the time that one work unit spent being processed or assembled. It is the time between when one work unit begins processing or assembly and when the next unit begins. So TC is the time an individual part spends at the machine, but not all of this time is productive. So in typical processing operation, such as the machining, TC consists of the actual machining operation time and work Pet handling time and two handling time per work piece. This can be expressed as in this equation Tc equal to To plus Th plus T Th. All of this unit is a minute per piece for Tc, To, Th, and Th is a use the minute. So The production rate for batch production. First, we define the batch processing time in minute. To find the batch processing time, we need to know the TSU and TC. Here, TSU means set a time to prepare for the batch. 
In batch production, the time to process one batch consists of two work unit is the sum of the setup time and processing time. So we have to write down the equation TB equal to TSU plus 2TC. This equation is only for one work unit. If more than what pattern but it produce each cycle at the time this equation must be adjusted. We also have the average production time per work unit for a given machine that I write down as the TP. We can get this TP by using this equation TP equal to TP over that means dividing batch time by batch quantity. So the production rate rate R B equal to 60 divided by T P. As in the previous uh, in the previous R B equal to 1 over T P. Here the TP unit is a hour per piece. So we just simply write RP equal to 1 over TP. But in this case, up TP is a minute per piece. So RP equal to 60 over TP. That is just a unit conversion. Because usually we are write down as the RP is the PC piece per our hourly rate for the Joshua production one the two equal to one that means the production quantity equal to only one production quantity at the time TP equal to TSU plus TC because two equal to one and then we can find the RP as the previous time RP equal to 60 over TP just only changes the TP but for Joshua production even in Joshua production the 1 2 is greater than 1 the production rate is determined as in the batch production as discussed in the previous slide for mass production, that also called the quantity type mass production and flow line mass production. First, we see the quantity type mass production. That means we can say that the production rate equal the circuit rate of the machine. RP equal to RC. For the quantity type mass production, the two become the very large. Since TSU over two approximately equal to C. Therefore RP equal to 60 over TC equal to RC. In this case TC must be in minutes per piece. If the TC is hour per piece, RP will be there 1 over TC. For flow line mass production, in flow line mass production means there will be more than one work station in the production line. Therefore, for each work station, we'll have the different operation time. So we have to take the measurement operation time measurement TO. We can find the TC equal to TR plus measurement TO. Measurement TO means that we can get at the 
for the next station. I already discussed this uh, about this production capacity in the previous session. Production capacity is defined as the maximum rate of output that a production facility is able to produce under a given set of assumed operation operating condition. The production facility usually refers to a plan or factory, and so the term plant capacity is often used for this measure. The assumed operating condition refers to the number of shifts per day, one shift or two shift or three shift and so on. And also number of days in the week or month that plant operate. So first we have to know the operating time. and employment level and so forth. Plant operating time uh, plant operating time can get from the number of shift per day and number of days in the week or number of days in the on the in the month. So we can find the PC as expressed in this equation PC equal to and multiplying with SW, HSS, and RP. Here, N equal to number of work that works center, working parallel in the producing in the line. SW, HSS, is a operation time. SW is a number of shift per period. HSS is the number of upper shift. RP is, as discussed in earlier, hourly production rate for each work sender. So this is a piece per hour. This equation can be used for only one operation. If more than one operation we cannot use this equation. For more than one operation for multiple operation that means and o is the greater than one that time we have to use this equation just simply divided by number of the operation so we can get the plan capacity but from this capacity model uh, shown as all the machine Number of the machine and machine are producing 100% of the time, and there are no bottleneck operation due to variation in process routing, utilization, and availability. Utilization refers to the amount of output of a production facility relative to its capacity. We can express the utilization as in this equation q equal to q over pc in here q is the actual quantity produced by the facility to a given time period pc is the production capacity for the same period so q may be less than the pc utilization is typically expressed as the percentage. Another one is the availability. Availability is a common measure of the reliability for equipment. It is usually project for automated production equipment. Availability is defined using two other reliability terms as shown in this figure MTBF and MTTR. And TPF mean mean time between failure and MTTR mean mean time to repair. The MTPF is the average length of the time the piece of equipment runs between breakdown. 
and MTTR is the average time required to service the equipment and put it back into the operation one breakdown occur as shown in this figure so availability can be expressed as in this equation A equal to MTPF minus MTTR divided by MTPF because of this utilization availability the PC may not be said as from this equation because in this equation we are assume an operated and machining are producing 100 percent now because uh, because of this utilization availability we cannot get 100 percent machining time at the time the pc plant capacity will be changes plant capacity actual output work may be the less than this plant capacity because of the utilization and availability okay another one is the manufacturing leak time this is one of the production performance in the competitive environment of modern business the ability of manufacturing firm to deliver a product to the customer in the shortest possible time often wins the order so this shorter time is referred to as the manufacturing lead time we can define the manufacturing lead time as the total time required to process a given part or product through the plant including any lost time due to delay time spent in storage reliability problem and so on. so we can express the manufacturing lead time MRT as in this equation MRT equal to in this equation in here MRT is a manufacturing lead time in minute and no number of the operation as discussed earlier TSU setup time for operation to quantity of pet or product and then TC operation circuit time TNO non operation time for the manufacturing lead time we also need to consider the non operation time that means the time due to delay lost time due to delay time spent in the storage reliability problem all of this is a non operation time so MRD equal to we can spread S in this equation now I already uh, now another one is the working process working process is the quantity of pets or products currently located in the factory that either are being processed or are between processing operation the blue IP working process is uh, in the state of being transformed from raw material to finished product so we can get the we can measure the WIMP by using this equation all of the terms are discussed in the previous slide A U P C M R D S W H S S I already discussed in the previous slide work in process represent an investment by the fin but that cannot be turned into revenue until all processes has been completed decision on automation system are usually based on the related cost of the alternative not 
only on the production performance. So I will continue. I will discuss the manufacturing. How we determine this cost and cost factor. For the manufacturing cost, we can classify two major category. For the manufacturing cost, we can classify into two fixed cost and variable cost. <coughs> a fixed cost is the one that remains constant for any level of production output. For example, factory bidding cost, production equipment cost, insurance and property tax. All of these fixed costs can be expressed as the annual amount. So we have to convert this. So we need to convert the capital investment cost to their equivalent uniform annual cost by using the interest rate factor. A variable cost is the one cost that varies in proportion to the level of production output. So when the output increases, variable cost also increase. So we can say the variable cost is directly proportional to the output level. For example, the labor cost, raw materials, and electric power to operate the production equipment. So when the output level increase, all of these variable costs will also increase. When we combine these two costs, variable cost and phase cost, we will get the total annual cost. So TC equal to FC plus VC multiplying with Q. VC need to multiply with the Q because variable cost is directly proportional to the output level. When fixed cost and variable cost are not only possible classification of cost and manufacturing, an alternative classification separate costs into direct labor, material, and overhead. The direct labor cost is the sum of the wages and benefit paid to the workers who operate the operation equipment and perform the processing and assembly tasks. The material cost is the cost of all raw material used to make the product. For the overhead cost, can be classified into two types, factory overhead and cooperate overhead. Because overhead cost is the overhead cost are all of the other expense associated with the running of the manufacturing thing. For uh, factory overhead cost, for uh, factory overhead consists of the cost of operating the factory other than direct labor and material. And then cooperate overhead is the cost not related to the community manufacturing activity such as cooperate engineering, research and development, insurance, that's a typical cooperate overhead expense. Such as power for machinery, payroll service, shipping and receiving, that is a matter for the factory overhead expense. So we can calculate the overhead rate by using the factory overhead rate and 
called rate overhead rate. Factory overhead rate is calculated as the ratio of factory overhead expense to direct labor expense. FOHR equal to FOHC divided by DLC. And also we can calculate the corporate overhead rate is the ratio of corporate overhead expense to direct labor expense. COHR equal to COHC divided by DLC. Here DLC is a direct labor cost, FOHC factory overhead cost, COHC corporate overhead cost. As I said in the previous slide, all of the FOHR and COHR calculation are based on only DLC, direct labor cost. And actually, actually the work center may be in different cases, such as one work, one worker and one machine, one worker and several machine. Several worker operating one machine, several worker and several machines. In any of these cases, it is advantageous to separate the labor expense from the machine expense. So the total cost rate for the worker center is the sum of labor and machine cost. This can be spread as in this equation CO where CO equal to hourly rate CL equal to labor rate FOHRL labor factory overhead rate machine rate is a CM FOHRM machine factory overhead rate thank you very much